Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. My name is Jonas, I'm your host, and I'm here with... TNT Dynamite, the explosive one. TNT, D-I-N-O-M-I-G-H-T. And we are here today with a, another illustrious guest. Mm -hmm. um, he's, a, he's a big cat with kitten paws. A type of guy that you'd love to meet, but you wouldn't want to meet him. He's he's one of the nicest guys that I've ever been afraid of. <laughs> this man had I've seen this man beat another man to the point where he could not stand up all regulation. I welcome you, professional boxer, Pistol Pete. Como estas, guys? Uh, Pistol. Me, Wayne, no. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me on the show with you. Finally, it's been a long time. Oh yeah, long Absolutely. overdue for sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. So, and thank everybody who's listening today. Whether you're watching us on our YouTube channel, which is uh, thecrazytown.com, or if you're doing it on Spotify, iTunes, whatever, we are glad to have you with us today. And of course, Pistol Pete, it is awesome to have you with us as well. So, yeah, everything no. he said times two. Plus, I've watched you uh, beat up. A few more guys than he has, so I definitely, <laughs> definitely have you right. seen way more of his prowess. He's been there in the yeah, early yeah. ranks, man. Yeah, it's crazy. To think yeah, heck yeah. So <laughs> let's let's get down to business. We got to talk a little bit about you. You you box, yes, sir. How Just many, a little bit. How many how many fights you been in? Uh, outside of the ring, well, maybe one. <laughs> I don't I don't like confrontation. That's the crazy thing. This is the yeah. thing. This is the, this so the boxer weird. who doesn't like to fight. Uh, non-confrontational guy but yeah seriously so maybe one outside and yeah and it's yeah it's weird i think that's funny part is i guess my fiance is kind of like the yin to my yang she's the more confrontational one than me so i gotta <laughs> like you know she hypes me up and so but yeah it's uh it's crazy i, I don't like any type of confrontation like that and but inside the ring over 20 something fights i think okay, so okay amateur yeah. and pro so it's pretty nice you get you see a mm -hmm. punch in the face yeah, we saw you do your uh, your big debut at uh, the uh, the big. It was how many how many people's that place hold? A couple thousand people for sure. Five thousand, ten thousand. Yeah, people it's got to hold a good bit. I, I, hope, I wish we would have had that many people there, but <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a full house. But I mean, it, but it was definitely there was enough people there, dude. Get yeah, hyped up. That was in the middle of the winter. Um, yeah. <laughs> so like, so this is a question that I guess would even benefit me as you know a person who I, I consider you a friend anyway. Of course, well, but it'll be it'll be introspective for the viewers as well. What gets a person into boxing? Um, because to me, I, it's insane. I'm not letting anybody hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the, it's crazy because so so boxing definitely growing up as a poor man's sport. You know, it's kind of like a last option for people who want to make something of themselves and find a way to make money, which is crazy because you don't get into that sport to make money because it takes a long time till you get to that. But it's like one of those, mm -hmm. like it's almost like a last resort kind of thing for some people, for others. Um, they just, some people are just born to fight. And I was definitely not one of those persons. Uh, I think <laughs> for me, it was more of one of the last things I had to hold on to sports wise, you know, tried it when I was younger. And then of course, football, everything else got in the way college. And then finally I was able to circle back to it. And for me, it was, one of the last things that I could be competitive with, which was great, you know, and I think that's one thing I'm still holding on to is trying to compete, still win, and not let the athlete go athlete go inside of me. So um, I think for some people, that's what it is. You know, you're, you're, it's you against somebody else, and if you win, it's all you. You know, yeah. And, see, you know. I, see now, I have a question for you because I'm a, I'm not I'm not a confrontational guy. I don't get very mad very often about very many things. And I've known you you don't have a very you don't seem to have a very big temper either. So not how the hell can you get yourself mad enough or whatever to get inside a ring and then to go attack somebody that you have no problem with, other than he's the person in there with you <laughs> at that moment? That's a different state of mind that you have to go into. It's it I would imagine. Yeah, no, it it was definitely some getting used to, especially doing like the early tournaments and stuff, because you got a room full of, you know, 50 something guys at a tournament that are all ready to kill each other. And just the hardest part was just learning to keep the the instinct of like wanting to keep fighting, because once you punch somebody in the face and they punch you in the face, you kind of have a mutual <laughs> respect after that round. It's like, how do I keep the same aggressiveness to want to kill this guy? You know, but it's um, you learn a lot you know, doing it in the couple of years and you learn that it's not so much of the, you know, the anger. It's just more being smart, you know, when you're inside yeah. there. So you can't fight exactly. angry. Well, 
well, you make a good a good point too. Like, if even if I had nothing against the dude, the second he hit me in the face, I'm ready to hit him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's more like you go into survival mode at that That's, point. Essentially, yeah, and it's um, you just you, you get that adrenaline pump in, and then you uh, depending on where you're fighting. And if you're in the amateurs, the scoring's different. If you're in box, if you're in pro boxing, it's more of like chess over checkers. You know, and you okay. gotta you once you start playing okay. chess, it's like cool. You can hit me, but are you gonna be able to do it again? And we'll go the next. You know, you know, I figured out what you're gonna do here. How are we gonna change the plan on that? So it it mm-hmm. it does vary, but yeah, once you start moving up, it's less about being angry and aggressive and more just about being smart so there was a good quote i read one time and it was just it, it really resonated with me because you learn a lot you know you get punched in the face you get angry and then you start <laughs> swinging but you also get punched in the face when you start swinging like that so it said uh when your temper raises lower your fists when you lower your fists or it's like oh gosh i butchered it but basically yeah basically <laughs> say if, when you're angry lower your fist when your fists raise Oh, where you're angry, something like that. I don't know. I'll find it later. We can post it. I got you. Here. Basically, <laughs> don't go in there angry. You're going to yeah. make a fool of yourself and get your ass whooped because you're going to be swinging, not thinking. Mm-hmm. And yeah, okay. exactly. That makes sense. All right. So it really is yeah. about like the sport aspect of it. The, uh, the like the watching the other person's mannerisms and reacting to the proper situation with the proper to proper movement or punch necessary. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. It's we spend countless hours, you know, in the garage just working the same punches over, same combos. Yeah, if we know yeah. we're sparring somebody, we know how they're gonna spar. So we work on, you know, what they're good at and how to take that away from them. Like it's just it's the little mm. things that count the most in boxing. And you know, I never think about boxing as a sport in the same aspect as like football or basketball because you know, like, hey, if this player like does this thing, he's gonna tend to do this, or if this player jukes this way, he's gonna, you know, you you watch these specific things they do to stop them. Yeah. It's the same mm-hmm. thing, but it's one on one instead yeah. of like it's five on like five it's, or it's footwork. You gotta look at their footwork and their hips and where they're shifting their weight and stuff. Yeah, and you even start picking up stuff like even in the middle of like sparring and stuff, you know, you can notice one guy, um, you know, you come back or you hear in the middle of the round, I can hear my coach like, hey, he's dropping his jab when he, you know, throws and, you know, little stuff like that you pick mm-hmm. up and you come over the top, you know, clean him up when he's missing up on little things or you go back to the corner. And it's like, hey, I noticed he was doing this, throw this when you go over there and you'll catch him. And I mean, it's just all about, you know, wow. taking the. Yeah, it's the little things that, and that's the hard part is going back to the corner and hearing what they're talking about because by then I'm just like, oh, whatever, you know. <laughs> so like, there's so much going on, but you really got to listen. Uh, I, and I need to ask you this thing: What is the feeling like when you realize in your head, "Oh, I got this mf'er"? Uh, it's just it, it's that's where the where the killer where the killer instinct comes when you start smelling blood and you're like, "All right, it's time to clean up." And it's like, yeah, it's when you start just. You don't see nothing but what you're throwing, and that's it. It's just it's it's hard to explain, but you just kind of go into kill mode. Is it like a is it like a like all of a sudden you're just like oh I got him, and then you're like and then you just can like it's like you don't even have to think anymore. You just know what to do. It, yeah, it's it, and it took a while to kind of gain. I don't know if it comes naturally for some people, but I know in like in the amateurs early on, I would hurt someone. I could hear my coach yelling from the side. I'm like get him, get him, and I'm just like whatever, you know. And like now, <laughs> if I see it, it's like immediate, and you, you jump on to, it. You you're like jump on it, yeah, clean yeah, up, yeah, yeah. you know. And it's it's sometimes it's a little tricky because like when you're sparring with people, you don't want to do that with people that you're working with. So it's like you know, it's right. you got to learn to control the switch and control the gauge because if you crack somebody in sparring like you want to jump on them but you're like all right let me pull back because we're working together and then to learn to control it when you're in the fight is like completely different but oh i get that makes sense because sometimes you only have that two second window of like you slightly daze them enough that you can just go in and get them Clean but in up. sparring you don't want to like not beat the crap out of your sparring partner yeah. for no and reason I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll tell them sometimes i feel bad and i'm like especially like gearing up like when i was gearing up for the fight at the frank Irwin center i was telling my buddy I was like, get ready. I was like, because I'm coming for blood today. Like, you know, and I let them know, like, this is going to happen, you know, because I, I need to mentally prep myself, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, we'll yeah. Be, we'll, my coach will send out group messages of, like, when we got sparring and stuff like that. And I'll be like, hey, I'm like, I'm coming for blood, so bring it. Because, like, I got to get myself in that mindset. Yeah, like, if yeah. I get cracked, if I get this and that, like, you know, I got to pick myself up. So, but Hopefully definitely. Hopefully those guys get paid well. <laughs> the ones who fight against you definitely get paid a lot better than we get paid. So. <laughs> Do you, have you ever felt bad when you hit somebody in the ring? Uh, not necessarily because they've hit me a couple times. So it's not like I've ever gone in and just completely wiped somebody out. But 
at the same time, you know what you're doing getting in there because okay. I've I've definitely gone in there and gotten wiped out myself. You know, when I've even even now, you know, there's times I go in there and I'll get cleaned up pretty good, you know, and sparring and stuff. And it's like I can't be upset about it because I know what I signed up for. You know, so it's kind of the same thing. It's like if you choose to get in there, it's your decision. You know. <laughs> Yeah, right, makes man. sense, man. That, makes that's sense. great. Good. I'm glad good. to get a little insight about you, man. It's, it's, it's knowledge for well, me as well as for the listener. Well, I know uh, with pandemic, obviously, it's been very limited, but I think I talked to you and you said you're starting to train again to get ready to start maybe boxing sometime later yeah, this year or something? Yeah, definitely. We're, um, you know, we're, we're gearing up hopefully maybe July, August again. We'll probably get something else going. Uh, so right now we're just trying to uh get in pretty great shape so that way we don't have to if they give us an opportunity we don't have to be like oh we're not ready for that so right we're just, right you yeah, know, i saw a lot of stuff. live events are coming back with crowds like wrestling and they're doing acl in austin this year like so they're they're starting to gear up live crowds again so it's only a matter of time yeah hopefully i don't think y'all have anything here uh, anytime soon just because of the way the restrictions are but once uh you know i'll probably be out of state for a while and then come back in once they open everything back up so We'll see how everything goes, but I'll definitely keep you guys posted, though. It'll be pretty exciting. We'll have another good night. <laughs> Sweet. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, let's jump into some crazy stuff here. So, uh, have you guys maybe heard about uh, Gwyneth Paltrow had that company where she released a her vagina-scented candle? Have you, have you is, heard about this? What? That is the Goop Company. <laughs> the Goop the Company, yes. They have you never made. heard about this, uh, Pistol Pete? I have not. <laughs> they also made like the little eggs that you're supposed they're like little crystal eggs and you're supposed to put them up in your vagina and they're supposed to make the vagina vaginal muscles stronger. Yeah, they definitely yeah. don't sell those at Bed Bath and Beyond or uh, <laughs> Bath and Body Works. So, Kegel, Kegel Kegel stones. Yeah, so look them up. <laughs> yeah, that's what they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she so she released this candle and it was controversial because she says it smells like her vagina. First off, I don't know who wants to light a candle and have their whole house smelling like <laughs> vagina, but to each their own. It was the essence of her vagina. The I mean, essence. Oh. oh, so like the chi, like the energy? Yeah, not it's like not the like they tried scent? to match it scent for scent in a laboratory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, like she's in there just on a table and they're just like with a with a scooper and just like trying to match the reverse engineer the scent. <laughs> Needs more sun kissed. No, what is that? Star kissed. Star yeah. sun kissed. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh wow that was oh i just caught that that's a that's yeah. a deep cut <laughs> so so you know so actually so these candles have been out for a while so but what has happened now a man is suing them for uh actually the candle cost 75 dollars on its own which i thought this was weird what? but a texas man is suing her because he says the candle has exploded and in, and in, got engulfed in high flames after a long periods of use. Candle must have climaxed. Nope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It hits its. It, it hits hit its, its peak. Point. <laughs> Yo, so so he said that he uh, he was burning the candle for a couple hours, and it it left the blaze left a black burn ring on his bedside table, and the candle jar was charred in black. And the company has responded saying that there's a warning on the website advising people not to burn the candle for more than two hours. Oh, wow. So they gave a warning. He didn't know it was there. He didn't read the, the label. He didn't read the candle label. But I mean, isn't that the <laughs> purpose so of like, a candle to burn it? Why would you have a burn restriction on something to burn? <laughs> right. That was my point. It was like... Here's this candle. Don't burn it more than 20 minutes because it might blow up and catch your whole house on fire. <laughs> how long, wait, how long do you guys leave your candles on for? Jesse leaves her candles on all day, so they, they go. Yeah, you can burn they them for go. a long time. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Oh, the, there's the, a doggy. Boxer, the boxer for a boxer. Yeah. <laughs> Kind so like, well, sometimes you leave the candle on so long, like so much wax will get wet that it almost puts the candle out, like itself, like yeah, because it, it. All right, uh, you know, okay, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm the asshole here, but I'm looking. Like, wow, <laughs> I'm looking at the guy like you know, how long do you need this candle in for? I, I've never left the candle on for. You can call it on. What do you call it? I've never left a candle lit for longer than <laughs> forty minutes. Forty minutes at a time. Turn that off. <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> it'll burn your house down. Yeah. I, well, yeah. Well, I've heard never to leave them on when you go to bed. And I've never got back to them. Like, what the hell's ha- happened into a candle? But I guess this is the reason. Like, this, there was another person who has claimed this happened. She said she lit the candle. And a few minutes after lighting it, the flames roared a half of meter out of the jar and okay. bits of wax flew out and fizzled okay. and spat. But the she luckily had it placed roared. on her fireplace. So it did not do any damage to her house. <laughs> this vagina candle was like a molten volcano. Just spewing out. It's like, like kerosene it's, for wax or what? What's, that's what's what going I'm, on? Yeah, there's, these are poorly made candles, all right? So <laughs> in this case, this is a poorly made candle. The things are going off like fucking pyrite. Py, what is napalm? And people napalm, out, wow. I don't know. That's crazy. Candles should not be shooting hot wax in <laughs> well, the air like a volcano. <laughs> to this lady, they responded saying that she must not have trimmed the wick properly oh because it God. said that you need to trim the wick of the can. So you get a candle, you have to trim the wick, you can't burn it more than 20 minutes or it's going to blow your house up. It costs $75 and it smells like a vagina. Anything to not do a recall. For $75, I'm just cooking fish tacos. That's all I'm doing in here. I'm not going to lie to damn <laughs> right. people. I mean, <laughs> with enough fish, it'll smell just like this vagina candle. Wow. <laughs> Is that it? Is it trout trout scented? <laughs> you you guys ever seen Fight Club? Yes. Yeah. Familiar all with right. There's a part in Fight Club where he's on the plane with Tyler, is on the plane with Tyler, and spoilers, and they're talking about... Uh, automobile recalls and they're like i'm the guy who finds out what is the chance of an accident happening in this automobile and i match that up with the price of an out-of-state settlement and Mm. if that price exceeds the price of doing a recall then we don't do the recall or the other way around is the only way they'll do the recall is if it's cheaper for them to do the recall versus out-of-state settlements for the probability of the accident happening I think the same shit's going on with this candle. You can't do a recall. Everybody wanted to try the, veg- the vagina candle. You slap pussy on anything, and it's going to sell like hotcakes. It's going to start selling. <laughs> is that how it works? It is. I'm assuming to mostly one demographic. Like I'm pretty sure it's all male complaints that are coming in. So No, women want to feel empowered. Oh, my God, I really feel Gwyneth's essence in this candle. Really <laughs> well, well, here's the deal. If they recall the candle, ain't nobody buying another $75 candle. Um, excuse me, did you not hear about Drake dropping his candle? Oh, Drake has a candle? Yeah, it's... What's it smell like, uh... Drake, it smells like Drake! I was gonna say, it smells like lyrics written by somebody else? (laughs) 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 Smells like a hot pen of a, of a (laughs) ghostwriter? A hot pen of a ghostwriter. Oh, I'm Drake, I say that. (laughs) <laughs> Drake, I did, I Wait, what, it smells like Drake? What does Drake smell like? Dude, no, that was funny. That Drake, was funny. You go with that. Drake's what do you candle think it smells like? smells like OV ovaries. What is it? You see? <laughs> OV ovaries. Oh, I so like it's actually that. a vagina scented candle. <laughs> He's yeah. trying to collab on the market. He's like, yeah. can only be one. <laughs> yeah, this is a so, clear case where this woman is taking this uh this whole goop sensation and just taking it to the next level. She's buying cheap shit wholesale, selling it as like fucking uh just like snake oil fixes yeah for, uh, essentially a snake oil saleswoman yeah and she's become that um and it, yo it's poorly made shit she's selling <laughs> fucking taiwanese fucking candles from the person off the corner i've been to new york i know how this works yeah yeah that's... you tell me it's a gucci bag it's not a gucci <laughs> bag when my uh, my grandparents used to go to Mexico all the time when I was a kid, and they'd always bring me back one of those fake Rolexes that for like twenty bucks. It looks just like a Rolex, but it but it ticks instead of like the and like yeah. they would just be like there'd be people across the border just selling. They would just have like baskets of fake Rolexes. It they tick, look really but it nice. Don't talk, yeah, that, that, that's uh, that's how you. Hey, you got to fake it till you make it, baby. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> is that why like people wear like the fake gold chains just because they want to look cool and then they yeah. have like the green ring around their neck yeah it's all about like, appearances man bro what do you got going on it's it all is about all... appearances exactly I wear just have you ever worn a fake gold necklace to look cool <laughs> i've worn a fake gold bracelet to look cool and then i took it off but uh <laughs> never fake when gold it, did it your wrist green 
For a little bit, I start, I would move it around to the other wrist so people wouldn't find out that it was fake. Or I wouldn't put it on the other side. I wouldn't flip it inside out so that way they wouldn't see it. How old were you when this was going on? Oh, man. It was my early 20s, I think. You are like last week. <laughs> I remember I used to – man, talk about fake it till you make it. So true story. I used to work at Sam's Club when I was in my early 20s, right? And I would push carts out there. I would wear these big-ass square earrings with colored stones in them that I bought it like for fifteen dollars at the mall. And I thought I was so cool, bro. My ears would be on fire, like just they were so hot from the sun. But I'll, and I'll never forget. It was so sweet. This one older lady, uh, she was a door, uh, she was a door greeter and stuff. Older lady, and she was like, you know what, Peter? That's why I like you. Cause I can tell you real. Nothing's fake on you. She's like, look at them earrings. Look at them glistening. And I was like, nice. for fifteen. Nice. I was like, thank you. I was like, but they're $15 at the mall. I was no, like, you but told the truth. they look good. Yeah, I had to. I was just like, oh, she was so wait, sweet. Wait, wait, so does cubic zirconia like get hot where diamond doesn't? Is that? It was a big ass metal that it was attached to that was in my <laughs> ear. A big <laughs> ass square bracket that was hanging off my ear. Did you ever have a fake chain? Because I ain't even going to lie, man. I have a fake ice style chain somewhere in here. We got to see it, Dynamite. <laughs> I don't know where it's it. at, man. <laughs> It is huge, though, and it looks like it's like silver with like little diamond specklets in it or some shit. Does it like, have a uh, no limit tank epic. on it? No, the it no. has a cross on it. I'm surprised you don't remember this this chain from when I was a kid. Uh, that is awesome. Jonas. Well, no, I don't remember you wearing a fake iced out cross, it's, dude. It's in ton of pictures, man. Remember when I was wearing the pink? I had the pink fillies, the pink and gray fillies. Oh yeah, set. yeah, I remember the pink and gray outfit or whatever. Would I oh. ever wear that? I wore that chain. All right, ladies it. and gentlemen, you got to demand to see this on the next episode. We need I'll, pictures, I'll pictures, or it didn't happen. It. I'll, I'll <laughs> you should just wear that. Uh, you should wear that pink outfit with the chain. <laughs> it was like a, a long time ago, sir. I'm gonna need that chain with a pink tall tee and some Echo <laughs> shorts all the way down to the Force One. <laughs> We're bringing it back, man. Bringing so it back. back to what you were talking about about this these recalls with. Uh, that's a really good point because it's not about that the companies care about people. It's about Profit what markets. costs us less money. Yeah. I can, They're like, oh, we can kill 100 people, but is it going to cost us less than fixing the problem on the car? Yeah. Which is a terrible way to think. Especially if they can just tell these people, oh, no, that was your fault. Right here on right. the website, you got to trim your wick and only have it on for 10 <laughs> minutes at a time. You didn't read the fine print. Yeah. yeah, that's what they, yeah, they've kind of like tried to blame uh, fi fine print, so. <laughs> I mean, Willy so, Wonka made a whole movie about that at the end, taught Charlie a lesson. God, if he wouldn't have just been an a-hole and, and. No, no, Uncle Joe was the a-hole. Yeah, Grandpa Joe, dude, he was a D, dude, what a D. They drank the fizzy lifting cola, dude, and they, they should have been, he had to decontaminate the bubble chamber, and he, they should have not got the factory. All the other kids almost died, but they just made it dirty they for everyone died. else. They almost died, too. Augustus Gloop ruined an entire river of chocolate by swimming in it. He did. Pathetic. <laughs> Pathetic. He didn't even swim. He drowned and then got sucked up a tube. He didn't even swim. He, he sank. drowned? Did he die in that? I mean, essentially, he went underwater. Like, I'm pretty sure the suction didn't get him from right there. He went underwater. Then the suction got him and took him up the tube. It's not like it just sucked him under right away. He Damn. just didn't swim. He sucks. Just get chocolate covered lungs. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So, yeah. uh, I saw an article that people have tried to figure out how tall a Lego tower can get before it breaks the bottom brick by the weight of the Legos. Oh, so, like, if you stack Legos straight up in the air, how many bricks would it take before the bottom brick collapsed on itself? So... I'm going to see if you guys want to take a guess to how tall this tower or how many bricks. You can go how many bricks or how tall is it, it a, would need to be. Is it a single, like, two by? A two by two. two. A two by two? A two by two Lego brick, one of the little square ones. A square one, okay. Yeah. I was thinking yeah, like two, two by two. Four. And did they just stack one on top of the other or did it? Just uh, straight up. So just high. straight up, yeah. Okay. I'm assuming it's got to be in the millions. Some things are, are pretty light. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say five hundred and forty-two thousand nine hundred and fifty-seven. Five hundred and forty-two thousand. Okay. All right. Hundred and fifty-seven. I'll make it easy on you, Jonas. I'm going one point five mil. 
Woo! Okay, you, you guys are both. You guys are both a little, a little off, a little high. Oh, okay. So <laughs> it, uh, oh, it's high. It, uh, it, it would be <laughs> that it would be taller than Mount Olympus. It would be thirty, almost thirty six hundred meters tall, which is what that's like fifteen thousand feet, essentially thirteen thousand eight hundred feet. And it would be three hundred and seventy five thousand bricks before the weight would collapse one underneath okay. itself. All right. Wow. I'm surprised right. 375. No wonder when you goal. step on them, they hurt so effing bad. You guys ever stepped <laughs> on a leg in the middle of the night or yeah. ever? Oh, yeah. It's awful. It's horrendous. <laughs> it hurts so bad. It's like you just got stabbed. You should just like – that's like why Kevin put him down in Home Alone to get the get the bad guys. He just did also, Legos on the – Also, what I'm thinking about too is where did they find the time to do this? This must have happened during the pandemic because this sounds like an <laughs> unemployment challenge. Hashtag unemployment challenge is what this sounds <laughs> yes. like. <laughs> this is some of that pandemic science. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, you know no one can do anything. <laughs> you know what I've ever done in my life? Never stacked Legos. <laughs> I think they had to do it. I think they had to do it scientifically because I don't yeah. know if anyone could actually stack that that tall. I imagine that they did like pounds per square inch until like the Lego <laughs> breaks underneath it and then like took the amount. Cause, like, yeah, you because like you couldn't even build it that tall. The, like, yeah, the, the elements, wind would blow it yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, it'd snap in a heartbeat. So, That'd be nuts. well, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like that they didn't do it. Why don't you do it, Pistol no. Pete? You go buy three hundred seventy-five thousand Legos, and then we'll help you build the tower in your Sounds backyard. Like a plan. We can make it happen. <laughs> Memorial Day weekend. It'll be. Yeah, like, I, that's what I do doing. like those facts that uh, like people make those towns out of Legos, so and they seem pretty. Pretty structurally sound. You put enough super glue. You ever have been you to like ever, a convention and seen those race cars made of Lego? And shit? Have you guys ever made anything crazy out of Legos? Were you got either you guys Lego guys as a kid? I had some, but they were there for a while until my mom threw them away. Maybe she was sick of picking them. <laughs> yeah, but you never like made anything ridiculous. You just like play with Legos or whatever. Like never like made some ridiculous thing. No, I couldn't. Have. My <laughs> attention span was way too small for that. I was a, I was a connects guy. Oh, yeah? I had some Lincoln Logs. No. Made log cabins. Lincoln Logs are not on the same level as Connect. They're trash, bro. They're <laughs> absolutely trash. Have you ever heard of Lincoln Logs, Pistol Pete? No, I have not. Oh, my God. They're so... Do you just want to show them that you're old? Is that what you want to do? Yeah, yeah dude. I mean, he's right. What about jumping no, jacks? Have you played with those? Some 80s. Yeah, jump. Have you guys ever played with a pogo stick? <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day, we used to get two stones and toss them at each other. We call yep. it hot potato. <laughs> hot yeah, here potato. we go. <laughs> hot potato. Here, I'll show you guys. Hold on a second. Oh, will you? Let's see. Yeah, here we go. This is what Lincoln Logs look like. Oh wow. <laughs> so they have like little. They have little things that you can then you build a cabin, dude. You used to oh, could cool. build some ish out of those, I guess. They but... look like they don't tell a lie. They oh know. Yeah. no. They definitely don't. Connects were like the upgraded version of Lego that never really caught on. Um, were they the ones that had the spokes that could like come off way many yes. different directions? So it was like, yeah, it was like the sticks and a bunch of connectors and you could build like framework and skeletons and stuff. Um, coolest thing I ever made with Connects, uh, a hand crossbow that I use. I made two of them. I made one for me and one for my friend. We would hunt each other in our apartment uh, hallways with <laughs> us. Like, fucking all right, Assassin's Creed. Yeah, wait, they would hook your hand? Yeah, well, I had it so that it had, like, a handle, and then up here would be the crossbow part, and then it came with rubber bands, and I'd just take the connect with, like, a suction cup thing, and I'd just be just taking, like, the Huntress and shit. It was sweet. I don't care what everybody like, said. As a kid, I was, like could, uh, I was lose an, an X-Man. Oh, yeah, definitely. Also, heed the warnings. Don't ever get on Dynamite's bad side, because... Uh, <laughs> You know, you'd be next thing you know, be walking down the grocery store and he's just throwing crossbows in your ass cheese. <laughs> I might just have one right here. Yeah. In the, oh my god, the, next to the fake chain, next to the fake chain. I'm gonna find that chain. I want to find, yeah, that you chain. should start wearing it all the time. I'm not gonna ever wear it again. It was the it was the waste of $80. If oh my god, it was an $80. <laughs> yeah, it was was an $80. $80. There's nothing oh, fake it. about it if it was 80 bucks, dude. It was diamonds. Is that what the guy told you when he sold it to you? <laughs> I don't know. 
Oh. Was it really eighty dollars? I don't know. I don't remember oh. how much it cost. That was years ago. Was just I was gonna say, how much do fake chains cost? Content. I don't know. I mean, my fake earrings were fifteen dollars. I gonna say yeah, that... I don't know. I probably paid thirty bucks for it, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What? Well, what made you Story stop wearing your fake declines. earrings and your fake chain? I've never wore any of this. I was just curious. Like, what, at what point did you go? You know, I think I'm good. Got a real <laughs> job. <laughs> got a real job. Right. I stopped caring about a fake chain around my neck. <laughs> when like, I stopped open. wearing underwear under my shorts, that's when I did it. Because yeah. you're like, you just don't care anymore. You're like, eh, I don't care how I look, how I feel. I'm just going to be me. <laughs> Wait, you you telling me you free balling? All the time, bro. You flirting with me? A little bit. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My lower <laughs> webcam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I feel comfortable with this. I've told I've told Jonas many a time that I need at least four pieces of fabric between my junk and the man's junk next to me. <laughs> Facts. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to sell you more than a candle, baby. No, no, no. So, if you, uh, so if you go over to Pistol Peach, you're gonna have to wear two pairs of boxers to compensate for I four will. layers. Of... I will. <laughs> he said, "Hey, I'm wearing one for you, bro. It's okay. Come on. Now. Yeah, I got mine <laughs> and yours." For you. <laughs> No, I feel, you know, you know, dude, I can't, uh, I can't, I don't like the free balling, man. Mm -mm, nope. It's easier. <laughs> I mean, way. wearing a box, wearing boxers is kind of almost like free balling anyways, because there's like, there's no like direct support, you know? Tried to like when you're wearing tidy whiteies. Yeah. Wait, what? You can't lunge in boxers. Sometimes <laughs> you absolutely can lunge. Periodically throughout my day, I have to lunge <laughs> and I need the freedom oh. to do so. Every, what, like this, three times an hour you got to lunge? Yeah, just, like, if I drop something, I'll just drop stage down. I got to lunge oh. and pick it up. It's got to be theatrical. It's got, there's, oh, there's gotcha. you're looking life. out for your back. Yeah, You, you can't know. just bend over at the waist. You got to lunge. Yeah, and I got to work on my hammies. got to work I, on the quads. I thought you this was a sexual thing. <laughs> <laughs> he just likes to work out. Um, No, you can lunge in boxes. Boxer briefs, then. They're full oh, I hate those. Yeah, I mean, they're not for me, but I hear some people <laughs> swear by them. And they're breathable. You can move around in them. Well, here's the deal. If you're going to wear boxer briefs, why don't you just wear briefs? What's the difference? Um, because you don't want to a little bit run around like you're wearing panties, dude. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to feel, like, feel like you're not six anymore, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, I look at tidy whities and I'm like, those are panties. You're wearing male panties. There's nothing sexy well, about that. There's nothing. I mean, not that I would find boxers sexier, but I can guarantee you for the woman, if I get undressed and she sees that I'm wearing some BVDs, crotch cutters, <laughs> you know, it's got to take her girl boner down a little bit. It yeah, does. yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, yeah. I got you. The only time I wear anything like that is when I go to the gym, man, because you got to make sure your stuff's protected if you like. If your shorts come out, like I'm you about know, to say, you get attacked by a machine. What are you protecting? Yeah, yourself? there you go. Make sure nobody's seeing your flipping doodles, man. <laughs> your flipping doodles. <laughs> well, I don't look at them. Good. I don't care. I see you, Myron, dude. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I see you, Myron. Wait, my gym shorts are sliding up. I see you. I'll sit in the way so you can see my dick. It's your choice not to look or not. I know. Right? Wow. Okay. Thank you, you just like pro choice. You cut up cut up the side of your gym shorts so they're like a gladiator kilt and like so you're just like well i guess it slid in you know look while i'm squatting or what hey. kind of give nobody any choice but to look I, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm forced to stare now exactly yeah yeah, yeah. as okay. a male i was not born with cleavage so you know i gotta <laughs> flaunt it wherever i can oh is that your is that your next best yeah, that's <laughs> man cleavage right there you give them a little look up the shorts and you know if they if they catch a glance Speaking of which, I cannot believe the, the, the shortness of shorts that guys used to wear in the 80s, and it was okay. <laughs> it is coming back, bro. It is coming back. <laughs> no, Wait, it's not, dude. Is this no, a millennial thing? Like, they're all like, let's have some cheek, no, cheeky no. deekies and let our balls hang out the crotch, or what? I have no idea, man. I just noticed when I go on the trails, it's there. Guys are in the shortest of shorts right now. This is definitely something... Uh, my lovely fiance could chime in on about all the short shorts and the guy pandemic. I don't know. What it is. I would love to hear her take on short shorts. Yeah, why are guys wearing short shorts? What's don't your say take on short shorts. Don't say anything racist. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> What's your take on guys wearing short shorts? <laughs> so pull back the reins. Whoa. Not where we can see anything. Just pull it back. All right. You don't need to. <laughs> 
the hot the take. Like that. This poor, pull back the reins. I can't believe she went there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of guilty on that. She said, "Men are just finding out more ways to air out the goodies. They're taking it back to the '80s, but at the same time, sometimes the goodies need to be aired out. What can you do? You know?" Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm definitely not wearing short shorts like that. I find myself to be pretty in tune with Zoomer culture and and boom and uh millennial culture, but if I see that coming back. I might, I might go ahead and just accept that I'm a boomer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my thought is always less exposed thigh <laughs> for men. I mean, that's that's just the I way you feel. You. That's the way you feel. That's the way we feel as straight men. <laughs> Other people might not feel that way. I, maybe I they want to see more thigh. They want to see a a, th- a thick, hairy man thigh I, flopping I find, around. I find that it's like when when women kind of talk shit about the, the one girl who dresses sexy. Why are, you, why are you mad at her for dressing sexy? Why are you mad at that dude for wearing short shorts? It's a good point. I'm not mad at him. I just don't want to see his balls dropping out the middle, dude. It's, then don't look at his balls. Why your why is your glance even there? Do you just walk up to a guy, look him straight in the dick, and shake his hand? No. This I, is think, a I think either way, it's a stuffy situation. There's not much you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. As men, we have learned the difficulties. We've all been bathed in the fire of the difficulties of looking a girl in the eye when she has a low-cut shirt on. I can mm-hmm. avert my eyes from something that I want to see. I can avert my eyes from something that I don't want to see. <laughs> well sometimes it's like a car wreck dude like it's like if you're walking by and like you're like it's like you almost like you have almost like you have the double take because you're like is there balls hanging out <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like i don't balls. want to see it but like why is that dude's balls hanging out of his shorts somebody died in this tragedy <laughs> yeah. you gotta like crouch down get a look <laughs> yeah <laughs> right you know, exactly three you got three hairs yeah. does there? he got some silly putty hanging out of his crotch or those is nuts <laughs> So funny. Yeah, so all right. So okay, so we're we're using a video chat for for this, obviously, but we're we're using uh not using Zoom. But um are you guys all familiar with Zoom? Have you used Zoom for like different things? I've zoomed it up, you know. I just did not I I did not realize we weren't using Zoom. What is it's uh it's a it's a free open source Zoom essentially. Um uh basically I saw this article and it's a it was a YouTube video. I tried to play it with the with the audio to record it. It doesn't it doesn't come through. But when you use Zoom, it it saves the name that you last used in your Zoom chat. And when you log in, it doesn't always give you the option to change it. <laughs> TNT, did you see this? I think you know. So this guy logs into co- virtual court <laughs> and he pops in and the judge is like, excuse me, sir, uh, what's your name? And he's like, who, me? I'm a Nathaniel Jones or whatever. And he goes, your name is not Buttfucker 3000. And how, how, what kind of idiot comes into my courtroom? And the guy's like, what, what, where did that come from? <laughs> so like... So this dude's on Zoom chats under BF or 3000 and then logs into court. I didn't yeah. hear TNT. Did you hear? Did he end up, did the judge end up like throwing the book at him later? The judge, later? the judge put him back into the waiting room until he got the name changed. And he was like, yeah, you can sit there. He called him something too. It was hilarious. The judge didn't use profanity. He gave kind of like one of those Mormon profanity words. Like your numb skull or something like that. Yeah. You know? yeah. The judge yeah, did skull. say the full phrase though what, at the beginning. Yeah. Oh yeah, he did yeah. say that he, part. Yeah. But they didn't. He didn't like really get at him. He goes, "What kind of idiot comes into my courtroom?" Yeah. I mean, that's pretty bad, dude. You can't do that. <laughs> so what did he change the name to? He's like Captain probably, BF probably. three thousand. <laughs> Yeah, he comes back in. He's just like short pants guy ninety seven. He's like <laughs> short short pants. pants. <laughs> Free ball 22. He's yeah. like, I'm good. So, like, uh, I have never been – actually, you know what? I did go to court one time as a teen because I got two speeding tickets under the age of 18. Oh, really? But, yeah, like they like if you get three in Ohio under 18, <laughs> they, they suspend your license. I didn't find that out until I got my second one. Um, okay. And oddly enough, I think I've only got two speeding tickets since then. So, like <clears> – but I drove like a maniac when I first got my license anyways. I've seen a little um, Vin Diesel in him there. All right, Fast and Furious. He's yeah, I know, right? I was out already. there. I was like a biker boy. I was making my own rules back when I was. Uh, 
Pistol Pete, do you have a uh, do you have any absolutely fictitious and totally made up fictional stories about court that you would like to share that are totally fictitious and none of them <laughs> and every single ounce of it is made up? Uh, nothing. Yeah, no, I plead the fifth. I don't have anything to share. But it's all fictitious, <laughs> just so you know, and none of this is real stories. Yeah. It's just you a heard, have you ever heard? Have you ever heard a crazy story about yeah, something just, happening to somebody? Just make in court? up a story in your head. I've got one I'm gonna make up. I have not heard anything fictitional about court stories. Um might have to nope. circle back on that one. What, what do you have? What do you have? All right, so I wanna tell a story about my friend. He was he was a nice guy. Um, dude I knew back from Cleveland. I'm gonna add some detail to add to the fictitiousness of it. Um, and he was driving home from work one day and he was smoking that marijuana. Oh my God. What kind of person did you know? Honestly, we had an intervention plan for him very soon after this. Okay, good. He just just watches when you're smoking the devil's lettuce. Right? Right? So I would much rather you make Satan salad than smoke the devil's lettuce. I don't Anyways. know if this is uh, as big a practice today as it was. Uh, this was this was a long time ago that it happened to him, but uh, he noticed that the traffic started stopping as he was on his way home smoking uh, his uh, illegal narcotics. Um, mm-hmm. Saw flashing lights, cops and stuff. Figures, oh, it's oh probably an accident. Probably an accident. Not really thinking about it. Windows rolled rolled down or whatever. Sobriety checkpoint. You ever? Oh, are you familiar with these sobriety checkpoints? So apparently, these are places where cops just stop every car on the road for so many cars, and they ask them what they're doing, where they're headed, and if you look guilty, or they say they smell weed in your car, then they pull you off to the side. Yeah, my friend got those. caught with the smell. Oh man. Oh no. Do they do do they do checkpoints in Texas? I've never I've never passed I've through never one. Seen, I've never seen them in the South at all. Do you I know? I grew up in the South. Have you ever seen a, a checkpoint where they check every car as you go through, checking for drunk drivers or weed or whatever? Or do they do it do they just pull over whoever they think is whatever? I've heard a lot of false uh false threats. I've always heard that they're gonna have checkpoints. I've never personally gone through one. Maybe I just avoided Riding through the areas that they were going to have them, <laughs> right. you know, it was like right. normal stuff. But um, yeah, every time I've seen about checkpoints, either I just avoid going out or I just haven't seen them. So no. I just feel like it's more of like a false threat that it's going to happen. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, I've only ever went through one in Ohio. Anyways, go ahead, TNT. What happened uh, to your friend? Yeah, so, you know, obviously he got caught and, he, you know, he had to go to court over that. And uh, he told me, he was like, oh, man, this is going to be a terrible day. As I've never been to court before. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's not like I have a lawyer. Should I get a lawyer? He's like, no, I'm just going to go in, take care of it myself. Walks up. The judge asked my friend, like, uh, so you were smoking weed while driving. You realize that's unsafe, right? My friend was like, yes. He was like, and have you smoked any weed since this occasion? And my mm-hmm. friend says, to be honest, your honor, this morning, I sure did. I had to come to court. <laughs> he said, "Fine him." <laughs> I wish, I wish Steve Harvey would have been there. They so could have been like, "Good answer, good answer." And just family <laughs> feud it. He thought honesty was the best policy. Idiot. Fine him. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Dude, get him out of here. <laughs> why do you think that that's a good? <laughs> <laughs> Straight Judge Judy this ass. Find him, get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> eh, you get what wow, you're saying, dude. I can't believe that happened to him. Oh, God. So. Dance with the devil. It happens. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you dance with the devil, you end up tripping over your own feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's my totally fictitious uh, court story. Yeah, nice. Well, so with, with, with the pandemic going on, the CDC has been putting out tons of advice about what you can do, what you can't do, if you're vaccinated, if you're not vaccinated. But they've put out another alert recently that salmonella is spreading like wildfire out there. And what they advised was, what they advised for people to do, I'm going to share it because I can't even believe it. Wash your hands? No. (laughs) Clean your goddamn kitchen? Do not kiss chickens amid the outbreak of salmonella. There's and, my Sunday afternoons. Yeah, it says, do not kiss or snuggle the birds as this can spread germs to your mouth and make you sick. 
So my question is, how many people are out here kissing chickens that they feel like they have to make an actual proclamation about not putting your mouth on a chicken's mouth? A uh, pee? <laughs> Pistol? I just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm blown away at that. I mean, it just kind of takes me back to the whole Tide Pod incident when kids were swallowing <laughs> laundry detergent <laughs> pods, and it's like, why do you have to tell people not to do this? Like, I mean... Making out with chickens is a normal thing. I get it, but it, is it? <laughs> is it? This might be a southern thing. Maybe I don't know. I've never uh, even seen a chicken IRL <laughs> until I moved to the south. I'm walking around the, the crazy town compound, I see a chicken just hanging out in the parking lot. I'm like, what the hell? What blows my mind is you know how hard it is to catch a chicken. I no, my... I don't. No, it is you tell us, Pistol Pete. <laughs> Extremely difficult. So okay. I'll take your word. Story for from it. the past. Um, Pistol Pete Sr. used to throw Pistol Pete Jr. into the chicken coops and make me chase the roosters around and he'd try to get <laughs> me to catch one. I'd be terrified because those things would come at you with the sharpest of claws. And he's like, you got it. And I'm just sitting here like, <laughs> you got it. I didn't go and then the whole time he's like, don't pick your head up too high. You'll hit the nails coming out of the roof. And I'm like, why am I in here? Like, get me out. I was five. These damn <laughs> things are trying to tear me apart. <laughs> I, I didn't get salmonella though. So did you catch one? Something. No. Oh, I mean, eventually, yeah. <laughs> kind of like landed on me, caught it. But it was scary as hell. You know, you got. Was he trying to like uh, increase your dexterity and like agility or oh like? I really think he was just loving the fact that he was torturing me. I think that's what it was. <laughs> he did some very twisted stuff. I noticed he would just he would like tie the chickens together by one leg, and he would. I would watch this man measure the ropes out and he would like walk from one end put them in a stake in the ground to where they were close enough to like almost touch but they wouldn't and then he would tie the chickens together one leg each and they would get close enough to where they would buck at each other but they weren't able to scratch each other so like their feathers would fluff and they you know as the roosters their feathers come out on the back and stuff and he would just watch them on the ropes and i'm like what is the purpose or not uh, like, I wonder like, if it, like, makes them... Control? He's just uh, watching well, them. Well, no, but I wonder if, like, it's, like... Because, you know, the roosters, like, gotta protect the hen house or whatever. I wonder if it was, like, meant to make them, like, more aggressive to, like, do... Like, in case, like, stuff happened. If there was, like, a real purpose to it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess in... Do you think in Hispanic In Hispanic culture, cockfighting's pretty big. So, like, to watch them almost fight but not actually fight was probably mm -hmm. a thing, too. Like, that guy was weird. But it, wait, is, is, is cockfighting a, a, a is big in Hispanic culture? Yeah, they definitely got a whole bunch of rings where they gamble on it, man. They people fight the roosters the same way people fight other stuff, dogs they, or people whatever. Fight else, people, yeah. yeah, people fight dogs, people fight you know, roosters, they fight everything. This is where they like put the knives on their feet, though. They put like blades on their feet. Well, they got talons. I've never actually seen people attach a knife to a chicken. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> I've heard about that I because there was though. a story. We did the story where they attached like razors to the chickens and it like killed someone by accident. Like because it wow. got up near a person and the razor like cut his neck or something. It was it was a crazy story we talked about a while ago. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's an obituary to read. I'll tell you that. <laughs> right. Oh, we've read some. Oh um, yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never seen chickens fight each other. I know they're aggressive. Males are aggressive to males, but I've never actually seen it happen. Yeah, yeah. I've never, I, I've never seen an animal fighting thing. I guess. I mean, I've seen, like, I've heard of it and know it exists. I'm not like ignorant to the fact of that, but I just don't like. I don't know. Like, it's like, it seems like it's like a big long process to find a whole ring of like people who like fight animals. Like, because it's like it's very un. It's like not accepted in the world obviously for obvious reasons but like you have like to get enough people who professionally do it it just seems like a big syndicate of like they have to have like an arena like you gotta have like a a, a place where the chickens fight or the it's like it's i don't know it seems like a lot of work from what movies have told us you just gotta find some back alley that has a random door and you walk through it and there's all these people that are organized there yeah, so yeah. if you want to find anything that's illegal and organized just go through a random alley and just go through a side door and yeah. you're there Yep, you're guaranteed to find one. Soups and bars, and bars hot ladies. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> There's open bar for some reason. <laughs> wow. You know, yeah, it's funny, so... it's funny, Jonas, that you say, you know, it seems like a lot of work and, you know, you, you don't really agree with these chickens fighting, yet this is coming from the same person that's like, we should have inmates fight each other to the death to try to get out of jail. 
I'm just, just saying, wait, dude, wait a I'm second. Just saying, I'm just saying, no, listen. Who logging in the prison? What's going on? If they are in on, regard, you eat chicken on a daily basis. If they were sentenced to death, in regard. if they were sentenced to death, and they they maybe got to like get their freedom, if they like, I mean, you know, people they use firing squad. Why can't they use Gordon? gladiator? Wow. Bodies? Okay. There could be. Big money in this. Death Row Kumite. I already oh have everything God. lined up in Dude, my head right no. now. Let's do it. I get, <laughs> I, well, of course, we got to get it uh, you know, approved and stuff, but and sanctioned. Yeah. But Death Row Kumite, man, that's it's coming, it's coming back like Celebrity Deathmatch. But you just said that you don't agree with chick with cock fighting or dog fighting or anything else, but human fighting to the death is okay. They're not sentenced to death, dude. The chickens the, the chicken's aren't. Uh, not already... a, a chicken in America is How about... sentenced to death. How about... <laughs> That's right. fair. Okay then. <laughs> okay then. As I'm defrosting chicken breast at the exactly. moment. <laughs> hey, but you get to stay alive if you keep winning fights. Here's here's the oh, thing. Okay. Thanks. Here's here's the thing. If I, it's hard to say this because it's an animal versus person. But you got sympathy for a chicken because they're not out there murdering people. But I'd say okay, we do a death row kumite of murderers oh, okay would people bat an eye because it's like well they've already destroyed people and ruined their lives and other people's lives why should we care about what they do you right, know but on, on the same note man you're gonna let him you're gonna let a murderer what he gets his freedom he gets to get no. back on the streets just because he won he fight people. Well, they get perks in jail or something perks <laughs> in jail he gets two ho hos a week, <laughs> not just one. He gets his own thirty-two inch CRT TV with a satellite dish. Is that a VCR? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He gets to listen to eight tracks and watch v VHS tapes for a week. Uh, you can you can say CDs and uh, DVDs at this point. It's yeah, right. They're enough. old enough. Everyone's like, "Ew, you don't stream. You put a disc in your player. Gross." The, what's the grand prize? It's a uh, complete season of uh, eighteen. <laughs> you get to walk away on DVD. Watch Mr. T. Honestly, <laughs> that's that's not worth it. I don't think you're gonna get any takers <laughs> unless they just want to kill somebody else, maybe. In which yeah, case you're just you know, I mean, a I, <clears throat> I mean, I am not for human rights violations in oh, any way, shape, or okay. form. Sure, sounds like it. That's like me saying that <laughs> we should allow a steroid sports league, and you think that that's a bad idea. Yeah, I feel like it is. Because if you don't want chickens to do it, why would you want people to do it? I, I told okay, him. Look, I will, the only way I'll agree to this Kumite is what do you call it? The inmate Kumite? Death row Kumite. Death right, row let's not Kumite. slander the name before it gets out there, okay? <laughs> All right, 100%. The only Trademark, way I agree PM. With this is if it's pedophiles. But then again, versus murderers? No, just all pedophiles. Murderers. I mean, can they no. even can they even fight? They kidnap children for a living. What's <laughs> what a kind living? of fight are they going to put up? I mean, it's 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 on even par because you know you got one abductor versus another abductor, and I, so, honestly, <laughs> I just feel like they're they're less than. I wouldn't even eat a, a, a pedophile. So, you know, like I'd eat a chicken or a... <laughs> wow, I'm but glad you would eat a human. <laughs> so let me ask you this. If a chicken was a pedophile, would you eat the chicken? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> if it, I can't take it. But if the rooster know. was preying on baby chicks, would you still know. eat that rooster? Oh, my God, I don't know. I don't do we even eat roosters or do we only eat the chickens? I don't know. Who knows, dude? I think we eat them all. They're all made of the same stuff, right? I would assume so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I have no clue. All right, Pistol Pete, if there, were, if I, I've brought this up, and I would just want your quick opinion because you're in sports. If they, you know, that'd be NFL, NBA, yada yada yada. It's very regulated, very drug tested, very whatever. I've always said that they should allow another league without any testing at all, and you can do whatever the hell you want. You can do roids, you can do drugs, whatever you want. This is and it's like a baseball league where everybody can be roided out if they want to, or a football league where they can be roided up, or whatever, fighting, whatever. Do you think call, it would be a good idea? Call it the Juice Olympics. Yeah, I would, I would think so. I mean, think about it. This is the worst we have idea. not changed much from the Gladiator days that, that were back then. We still put a whole bunch of oversized monsters in an arena and say, hey, beat the hell out of each other. You just can't kill one another. It'd be the same thing. If one yeah, happens but you to gotta, die, you gotta earn the muscle. Think, think about, I mean, yeah, you don't just take steroids and all of a sudden you're buff. Like, it still takes, and this is from watching steroid documentaries because people who take steroids, they defend themselves 
till the day they die and they're going to be like, you just don't take steroids. And all of a sudden you're just this giant beast. Like you still got to put in the hours of dedication yeah. and work into the yeah. gym. So you do. I would say call it the juice Olympics and we got a deal, buddy. I, I'm right there with you. <laughs> the right. TNT hates this idea. So I do. I hate this now. idea. All right. So you're playing, you're playing apex legend and apex legend comes out with a new character that has all the powers of octane hazmat and bloodhound all together but he's behind a 20 dollars paywall you ain't got 20 dollars to spend this other person has that 20 dollars. he comes in with three different alts well then i'm going to the nfl baby i'm getting out of the <laughs> <new Olympics. laughs> you gotta know your lane it's I'm, pay to win Dude, i'm not gonna go to yeah but if everyone's on the same playing field it's, it's not everybody's on the same playing field. It's pay to win. Whoever gets the me- the best, most uh, intense or the most potent freaking steroids is going to do better than everybody else. But you still got to practice. I mean, it'd be the same. Also, it'd be the same way if somebody paid for all those perks to get the best Apex character, but they can't fog- f- fondle an analog stick to save their damn life. What's it going to matter? Yeah, they can't aim. It don't matter. You, you, if, you're t- shit, if you're shit on the stick, you can't. You can't. You're not going to win. Yes, but all things being even, the person with more money is going to be able to, to essentially rise to the top over the other person. If they both have the same yeah, skill Yeah, but they set. only make like 50K a year. It ain't like they're making millions. Repeat mm-hmm. that Repeat that last statement again because, boys and girls, Dynamite just taught you a lesson in life. What was that last thing you just said? I said if they are on the p- same playing field, yet one person has more money, they have access to more, which means that they're eventually going to rise to the top. More money you have, the better you do in life. Thank you for teaching everybody the <laughs> most valuable lesson they will, they will learn through, today. Through Apex if you, Legends. <laughs> if you have no money, you are worthless. That is the lesson that we've learned today. <laughs> and, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in the fight against the, the – uh, what do, you, what do you call this? Monetization, monetization of game function like this. So when oh, I equate yeah. it to like real life stuff, he like if a boxer comes in, he, oh, this boxer gets to pay an extra $30 and he gets to put one pound weights in his gloves. Like, come on, fam. Yeah. I, I'm a better boxer than you, you, or you may be a better boxer than the guy, but if he gets one pound gloves because he was able to pay the $50,000 surcharge before the match starts, well then, how 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 much does the phrase go? Um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So you can say your talent, you're buying all your talent, right? Putting all that stuff, but then you got some average Joe over here that's just got all the glory inside of him, and you can have all that extra stuff, but he's still going to destroy you. Like what? Where? Where does it go from there? You know? I feel like that's a story that has been told, and and not to say that it's not true. I'm not saying that talent versus hard work. Um, cannot lead to similar roads. I guess it's all about the road that you take to achieve that greatness. But access to certain things is going to give you a head start. Um, Whereas talent, I feel like, has to be developed. One person has a head start. But that is not to say that they cannot achieve the same levels of talent. Um, Talent and ability are things that can be adjusted through your own dedication and to us to the craft whereas these external factors like how much money you have the type of family you have who your family knows and how how they're able to get you into the business and everything like if you're if your dad had known george foreman where do you think your fucking boxing career would be right now wouldn't I'd be selling grills on the side? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that bacon to drip? Here you go, baby. <laughs> if, if, you're, exactly. if, you're, if your mom just happened no, I get, to know Mayweather, yeah. you know, you'd be on a different level of boxing right now. Yeah, understandable. Understandable. But I guess would you be as good of a boxer? The... Who knows? Maybe yes, maybe better. Or yeah, or 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 since you didn't have to fight to get where you were. You don't have the drive to get you to that next level. Well, like I said, maybe not. Maybe yes. Maybe yeah, not. exactly. You never know. Yeah. So I guess the argument's torn. So you got the side where money can buy you the better juice, and then you got the side where money can buy you the cheaper juice. But then you got the harder ambition to beat the other juice head out. So hey. either way, <laughs> Juice Olympics 2024, it's happening. It's I want to be the best juicer I can be. It will be funded by Crazy Town Podcast, and it no. will be live. No, it will not. I'm not funding it. Ah, uh, half. 
of us. Soldier. You know I'm raised from the mud too. Uh, I'm <laughs> raised from the it. mud. So I <laughs> oh know, goodness! Man. I wouldn't like it any other way. I don't want it easy. I don't want it easy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, Pistol Pete, we're about to run out of time. You have any closing words you want to throw out to everybody before uh, before we wrap things up today? Not necessarily, man. I appreciate you guys having me on here. Um, as our good friend Dave Chappelle said, "Up with hope, down with dope." That's all you got to know. That's the best way to end this. TNT, anything you want? Any closing statements? No, man. Just glad to have P- Pistol Pete on. Finally, man. It went it went very well, man. You did good. Your Heck first yeah. debut. Yeah, outlet, man. man. You sounded very media trained in those opening questions. I loved it. Pop it's it like I can see man. you on Sports Center. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Is this, is this officially first. the first podcast you've ever done? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You were natural, my friend. So yeah, well, I've had one interview before this, so uh, I think uh, it, it's it's gone pretty well. So, yeah, <laughs> awesome. Excited. Awesome. Awesome. So, all right, everybody, that's all time we have for today's episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Go to thecrazytown.com to go to our YouTube channel. But for Jonas, TNT, and Pistol Pete, let's we go. Are outside.